But before I do, let's flip on over to the other show from yesterday, which was NXT Deadline. The Iron Survivor concept. We had our first two Iron Survivor challenge matches ever. And the Iron Survivor concept is a winner that I think is here to stay, and it should be. I think they've hit on something fun with this. It has elements of the old scramble matches, which I I personally was never really a fan of. But they tweaked it. It's got elements of the Royal Rumble in there. It's got elements of the Iron Man match as well. But they're not as long and drawn out as those 60-minute matches. They keep it to 25 minutes. I think that's a good length. So... You know, you have the the clock adding to a sense of urgency and and energy that made it fun, especially in those last few minutes of both matches, right? They were very dramatic in those final minutes as people were scrambling to try to, you know, gain some last-minute falls. The penalty box concept works. You know, when one person loses a fall, you lock them in a box for 90 seconds so they can't gain any falls, right? That's their punishment. I'm not sure they need the staggered entrances, though which is kind of the rumble element of the match. Uh, since you win the match based on points, it seems unfair to have people first entering the match with only five or ten minutes left as opposed to starting them all at the same time. You start with a less cluttered field that way, I get that, but I wouldn't want to be the person entering the match last. I just don't think that's fair to that person. But, you know, NXT is a place where they can try new things. I, I called it, it's their, it's their Petri dish. They can try new things. They can try to create these things that haven't existed before. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. They needed something to replace war games. I mean, Shawn Michaels flat out said, we lost war games. We had to come up with something new. And I think they found their match. Now, the men's Iron Survivor was the better of the two, but the women's match was very good also. Uh... Always felt like there was something going on. Never a dull moment. There was a sense of urgency there. Roxanne Perez starts the match. She goes on to win the entire thing with only two falls. And so she wins the women's Iron Survivor match. I thought Kiana James was the standout. And yet she was the only one not to pick up a fall in the entire match. I don't care for her character, but she's shown a lot of potential in what I've seen from her. And as I predicted, you know, Roxanne wins... And then I think what happens is she goes on to end Mandy Rose's stranglehold on the NXT Women's Championship. And from there, Perez drops the title to Tiffany Stratton. You know, maybe WrestleMania weekend. Tiffany Stratton has the greatest potential out of any of the women that I have seen down there in NXT. They aired a vignette on this show for a woman, a a blonde. We couldn't see who it was. Uh, But it was a vignette hyping this person's arrival at New Year's Evil on January 10th. And again, they didn't show us who it was, but that could be for Tiffany Stratton. She has been out with an injury since her Lights Out match in August with Wendy Chu. Uh, I believe she's ready to come back, so that might be her return date, and the timing is perfect. Especially if on that same night, if they do the title match with Roxanne and Mandy, and Roxanne wins, and that's the same night that Tiffany Stratton returns, you start building to the eventual match between them. Uh, I'm thinking it's stand and deliver. That would be the best time to do it. We had Isla Dawn getting a win over Alba Fire. Alba Fire hit a swanton bomb, had the match won. But the referee starts vomiting black goo and collapses in the corner. This new COVID strain is wild, I have to say. So that's the same referee that Isla Dawn missed it in the face by accident on Tuesday when she was aiming for Alba and their pull apart. I hope this isn't a chronic illness that this man now has. Another referee is sent out to check on him. Isla Dawn then runs Alba Fire headfirst into the exposed middle turnbuckle and wins the match. I thought they were having a pretty solid match up until the goofy-ass finish. That, that just killed the entire thing for me. The New Day are the new NXT Tag Team Champions. They beat pretty deadly... I figured after SmackDown on Friday night that Imperium would get involved and cost the New Day the match. So I was very surprised when they actually pulled the trigger on this title change. They had a really fun match. Kofi Kingston now makes history. He's the first man to 15 tag team titles, beating out Edge and Booker T, who each had 14. So now Kofi holds the record. That may have had something to do with how over-the-top Booker T was on commentary about being disgusted that the New Day came to NXT and they got a tag team championship match, how they came out of nowhere. He said they stole, you know, an opportunity from the Young Stars. 
His logic is not wrong. New Day literally showed up on the Go Home show and they were granted a tag team title match. So he's not wrong. Uh, but the New Day also were not touching the Usos anytime soon. The Usos are going to ha- have those tag team titles at least through WrestleMania. And it's not the New Day who are going to be taking the titles from them. So what do you do in the meantime with Kofi and Xavier? Shawn Michaels said, well, if they're not in the middle of anything uh, major, if they're not being used, hey, uh, hey, Paul, can I use them? And Triple H is like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so it gives them something to do with the idea that they might be able to help sell tickets for their Vengeance Day show. NXT is going back out on the road for the first time in a while. And February 4th in Charlotte is the date. They're going to be running, you know, a big NBA arena. They're going to have to sell tickets. And it's not unlike this year when they had Dolph Ziggler come in, right? This was around WrestleMania time. It's the same logic, right? We need some main roster talent that we can advertise who can help move some extra tickets. And to me, I think that's all this is. And as a strategy, I think it makes sense. You're going to run a big building. They're not going to, I mean, they're not selling out the building or anything. They'll probably fit it for, I don't know, three to 5,000, somewhere in that range, even though it fits about 19. You know, but it's a smart move to try to tap into that main roster talent to try to move a few extra tickets. Grayson Waller wins the Men's Iron Survivor Challenge with three falls. To two falls for Axiom, two for Joe Gacy, two for Carmelo Hayes, and none for J.D. McDonough. Yesterday was not a good day on these shows for people named J.D. I like the finish with him stealing the pin from Carmelo Hayes and then running away for the final 20 seconds as everybody chased after him. All he had to do was run out the clock, right? It's smart strategy. That's what I would have done if I was in the same position. There's no countouts. So I would have run right out of the building. I would have had my luggage waiting for me. I would have had a car engine running. (laughs) I would have jumped right into the car. I would have been out of there. He's a prick heel. And that's what prick heels do. Everyone had a chance to shine. I'm not sold on Grayson Waller as being a top champion. The guy does get a lot of heat. So I think setting him up to challenge Braun for the NXT title at New Year's Evil is is fine. I presume that's where the match is going to take place. I don't think they officially said that. Uh, I had Carmelo Hayes winning, but if they put that off for one of the bigger shows, I don't have a problem with that. You know, Braun Breaker retained his NXT title against Apollo Crews in the main event. They had a good match. I don't know where they go with Apollo after this. Shawn Michaels, after the show, said that he has no intention of letting him go anywhere when he was asked about him going back to the main roster. Uh, He said they absolutely have a plan for Apollo going forward. We'll see what that plan is. But Breaker retaining was the right call. Now he goes to New Year's Evil. He beats Grayson Waller. I think you want to have at least one of your Iron Survivor winners uh, go on to win their respective title. I think that's going to be Roxanne Perez. I don't think that's going to be Grayson Waller. That then paves the way for them once NXT hits the road again in, in the bigger venues to do Braun Breaker against Carmelo Hayes for the NXT Championship. Either at Vengeance Day, they could do it there, or they could do it at Stand and Deliver, WrestleMania weekend. If they're going back out on the road, they should do that match in a bigger venue anyway. Before one or both of them get called up to the main roster, we should get Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes for the NXT Championship. And if you're going to do it, do it in a bigger building. So Deadline was a good show. Uh, A lot of really good wrestling, a lot of great wrestling to be had on Saturday. 